My name's Ruth Goodridge and I'm a lecturer in the Additive Manufacturing and 3D Printing Research Group here at the University of Nottingham. So hopefully by the time that this time capsule is opened everyone will know what additive manufacturing is. However, for the benefit of present time, um, additive manufacturing is a set of technologies that are used to produce end-use parts directly from 3D model data, uh, usually by building the part up in layers. In the media, these technologies tend to be referred to as 3D printing, um, and sometimes people use the terms additive manufacturing and 3D printing interchangeably. However, not all the technologies really are printing. Um, and therefore I tend to reserve 3D printing for the techniques that are actually printing materials usually from molten polymers or other materials and tend to be the entry level systems that some people envisage will be in everybody's home uh, in a hundred years time. And then additive manufacturing for the more industrial processes that use for example a laser or electron beam to fuse powdered material together um, and generally allow the production of more complex parts that have greater strength and are more robust. So the object that I've chosen to put in the time capsule is an additively manufactured um, flow chemistry reactor. Current flow chemistry equipment basically equates to a pump and a stainless steel tube and this is limiting the development of, of that technology. So we are trying to capitalise on the much greater uh, design freedom that you get with additive manufacturing uh, to produce more complex reactor designs uh, and therefore increase chemical yields. So I realise that this looks just like a big lump of metal, um, but it's got two holes in it, here and here, and then throughout the part runs a channel that goes forwards and backwards and up and down within this small part. It's actually this that I've used as a model uh, that shows where we're at at the moment with uh, additive manufacturing. So the clear resin uh, represents the metal and the black resin uh, represents uh, the channel uh, inside the part. And the channel uh, goes backwards and forwards, loops back on itself and up and down to increase uh, the channel length within the volume of material. In terms of what developments we need in the field um, over the next few years, I'd like to see uh, an increase in the variety of materials that are processed by additive manufacturing. For example, uh, with this part we'd ideally like to see the reactors being made in glass, uh, but there's not currently a reliable enough and accurate enough method to produce parts by additive manufacturing using glass. Also obviously being able to uh, produce parts in multiple materials uh, would help parts like this to have increased functionality. I'm very lucky to work in a field that's rapidly evolving um, and therefore everything that I or other experts do in this area tends to make a difference um, and therefore I'm very lucky to be working in this field. When I was doing my PhD it was the relatively early days of trying to process uh, ceramics and glass ceramics by laser sintering um, and it would probably sound ridiculous to, to people in 100 years time but I remember one day being able to produce uh, a small cylinder um, of glass ceramic material that didn't fall apart when you picked it up um, and I remember being very proud of that. So my advice to future generations would be to keep an open mind about where your research is going to take you. Um, I certainly didn't envisage that I would be doing research into uh, additively manufactured flow chemistry reactors, uh, but it's very interesting to be working in this area. It's very impressive exactly how I envisage a time capsule to be.